So you're on a budget and you want to get the best bang for your buck in a video camera. Do you go for an older DSLR that will be the, you know, the easiest on the wallet? Or do you want a more modern but slightly more expensive, you know, let's say mirrorless camera that has basically everything you might want? Gee, if only we had two cameras to pit against each other to find out. Oh wait! The Canon T6 versus the Canon M50. Let's find out which one works best for the best price. What's up everyone? I'm the Everyday Dad and if I can figure it out, you can figure it out. Making online videos is awesome. And you know what? You don't have to break the bank to make them. So let's get right into the comparison of these two generations of cameras and find out if it's worth sacrificing some specs and features to get the barest of bare bones but still a good image quality or should we save up a little more to get a more functional, you know, with a little more bells and whistles in a camera? If this is your first time hearing about either the Canon T6 or the M50, let's cover some basic video specs to get us all on the same page. This isn't going to be super in-depth. I have videos that go into more detail on both of these and you will find those in the description below and in end cards you can click at the end of the video. It, it's just super easy. And a real quick disclaimer since I'm holding a DSLR right now, and yes, while DSLRs were primarily designed for photography, I don't take photos at all. And you know what? I go out of my way to delete photos if I take them accidentally. Uh, they're jokes, jokes. So we will be covering the basic video specs that an online content creator would care about because you know, that's what's important. Photos, video's important. Let's go beauty before age and bring out my favorite budget camera of 2018. The Canon M50 was released in February of 2018 and for a while there, it was one of the most hated cameras on the internet. People were like, it does 4K but has terrible autofocus and has a huge crop, it's basically a garbage camera. I obviously disagree, and it has a 24 megapixel APS-C CMOS sensor and is running Canon's Digic 8 image processor. It can record it up to 4K 24 frames per second with a huge crop and loss of autofocus, but it's most useful when recording in 1080p up to 60 frames per second. When shooting in that 1080p mode, you will get access to Canon's almost never fail dual pixel autofocus is, and that's one of the main reasons to get into the M50. On the back is a fully articulating three inch touchscreen, and on the side is an audio in jack, like, it's like everything you could want in a camera. I mean, why do people hate you so much? You just wanna be super chill and easy to use and just provide a reasonable experience and be in a super tiny body, but alas. <laughs> Next up is the older but thinks they are able to keep up with the youngsters, the Canon T6. This was released back in March of 2016, and while it doesn't have as many specs and cool features as the young whippersnappers, it still finds that it can keep up with the young ones in the ways that matter even if it is starting to feel older than its peers. Is that me? The T6 has an 18 megapixel APS-C CMOS sensor with Canon's Digic 4 Plus image processor. It can record in up to 1080p at 30 frames per second, and if you want slow motion, don't worry, it's got your back with 720p at 60 frames per second. 720p is not in anymore, so just don't use that if you if you can help it. And that's pretty much it. Whew, that wasn't too bad as far as specs go. I mean, it's video. There's not very, does it shoot video? Yes, okay, we're good. But cameras are pretty similar, right? How we differentiate them is to see how they stack up when compared against the four columns of quality. First up, video quality. When I say video quality, I mean both the image and the audio that can be recorded internal into the camera. Sometimes cameras can do real fancy things when using an external recorder. I mean, like right now we're using external recorder with our Nikon Z6. So when we talk about higher end cameras, we'll consider it. But for these two, it's strictly gonna be what video we can get with the body, a lens, and a positive mental attitude. As we talked earlier, the M50 can do 4K 24 frames per second, but I mainly use 1080p 30 as it's the frame rate I prefer. But it keeps me in that sweet, sweet dual pixel autofocus and don't even, don't even bring up 24 frames per second to me. Ugh. But thankfully, both of these cameras have a really good video quality to them. I think the images look perfectly fine and usable no matter which of these two cameras they come from. I will say though, and we'll see this more in a future column, it will absolutely be easier to get higher quality audio from the M50 as it does come with a 3.5 millimeter audio in jack, which if you flash back to Monday's video, Whoa. Like you can always get external audio like even right now on my Nikon Z6 normally I have it hooked up to my wireless system But you know just for solidarity of the video. I'm recording this audio externally too Whoa. 
One of the benefits of both cameras is that they, you know, come from Canon. One of the things that Canon really gets right is the out of camera image quality. It rarely has the highest bit rate unless it's using a horribly inefficient codec. But while other people will argue about other cameras having the same colors as Canon, it is hard to say that Canon does not produce a pleasing image with very little work. The images, even for like a very cheap, and I understand that it's not cheap normally, but for cameras, this is a cheap camera, those images still look good. But don't take my word for it, let's hop outside to find out how these two can vlog. <laughs> okay, welcome to the vlogging test between the Canon M50 and the Canon Rebel T6. Now they're both gonna be set to auto because as we'll see, and as we saw on Monday's video, it is hard. I'm, I'm auto-focusing the T6 real quick. As we saw in Monday's video, it is a little more fiddly to make sure that everything's working on the T6. So, ready to go? Cameras are on? I'm super excited. Vlogging test begin. Whoa! Okay, so this is the vlogging test of the Canon M50 versus the Rebel T6. Now, there are some very key differences uh, between the two cameras. One obviously has a flip screen. The other obviously does not. So the flip screen makes it so much easier to know what's in focus, what's exposed properly, what's framed properly, but they're both currently set to auto and they are both at 18 millimeters because that's the widest that the Canon kit lens comes with. Again, they both have their kit lenses. They both have everything. The audio is being recorded externally to a Zoom H1N uh, external recorder. Uh, but this is the internal audio from the Canon M50, audio test one, two, three, audio test one, two, three, and this is the internal audio from the Rebel T6, audio test one, two, three, audio test one, two, three. Now, while one of these is a mirrorless camera and one of these is a DSLR, uh, neither have in-body image stabilization, surprisingly enough. Both of the kit lenses do have stabilization built into those, so hopefully they're helping us out a little bit with stabilization as I just wander around the crucible because, again, it's still snowing out here and uh, it's just easier to do it here than to try to like go all the way out to my normal vlogging spot. But yeah, this is the image quality. I assume that the image quality is very similar even though the M50 has the new Digic processor as opposed to the older Digic 4 Plus processor in the Rebel T6. But yeah, vlogging quality, the screen's so helpful though, so helpful. Okay, back to the video. <laughs> Okay, and this is the indoor slash studio test of the Canon T6 versus the Canon M50. Now again, if you saw Monday's video, and if you didn't, there again will be links in the description below for that, where you can get a little more in depth on the T6. But again, if you saw that, I'm trying something new with this, uh, this shot where you can see me recording with these two cameras while I'm recording with these two cameras. It's the inceptions of camera reviews, but yeah, this is the indoor studio test. Both cameras are set to auto mode, so straight up video auto mode. Uh, the Canon M50 definitely has the way better autofocus. The Rebel T6 though, I'm finding has really good image quality too. The audio you're hearing is coming from my Rode VideoMic Pro through my Nikon Z6, but this is the indoor audio test of the Canon T6. Audio test one, two, three. Audio test one, two, three. And this is the indoor audio test of the Canon M50. Audio test one, two, three. Audio test one, two, three. Now, I don't know what this looks like, and actually I'm using the kit lenses on both, and I do not like how the kit lens looks indoors with the Canon M50. I'm always using something like the Sigma 18 to 35 if I'm gonna use it indoors, so I'm actually pretty excited to see how this turns out, because I liked how the kit lens looked in the T6 video earlier in the week. So yeah, again, this is the indoor studio test of the two cameras. How are they? Am I looking, am I looking pretty? How am I, can I see? I can just see that we're in focus from the back over there. I can't actually see how it's looking. So hopefully it looks good. Okay, back to the video. And we're back. So we've seen the video quality and it's perfectly usable out of both cameras. But now it's time to find out how easy that image is to get. Number two, the physical body of the camera and how easy is it to use before you hit record. As these are two different styles of cameras, they do have some big differences between them. The T6 is a DSLR and the M50 is a mirrorless camera. And that's really the biggest difference. The T6 has a mirror in front of the sensor and the M50 doesn't. This allows the M50 to be much, much smaller. And frankly, it's one of the smallest interchangeable lens cameras on the market today. The only other ones that are comparable to size are the other Canon M lines of cameras. I mean, they're really small. 
I have regular people sized hands and even I can palm this bad boy. I mean, it is not very big at all. Both do have a similar amount of physical buttons and dials and while both are mainly plastic construction, I actually find that I like holding the T6 better. It's a little bigger and has a little bit bigger hand groove holder place thing that makes it just so much easier to handle. Plus, it has more buttons than the M50, which allows for using them to navigate the menus easier. But the M50 does have the much bigger benefit of having a fully touch-enabled screen. So it doesn't need those buttons as much because you can just tap on the screen to navigate through the menu system, which is super useful. Now, I do want to touch on the menu system quickly. While the M50 does have that touchscreen, I actually find that the system on the T6 to be easier to navigate through. Now, this might be because there are less video options overall, that, I mean, that might have something to do with it, but I like the layout of the older interface more than I do the new ones. Something that I, and I don't know if it's something weird about me, but something I generally prefer in camera menu systems is when they color code the different sections. I know that sounds weird, but I really like how Sony does this in their newer version of their UI. Aesthetics matter too, and I don't know, something in my brain works better when it's color coded for what the menus mean. So when it comes to before hitting the record button, I'm actually gonna give this one to the T6, which yeah, I didn't really expect to do that either, but I think this one is easier to set up. But setting up the camera is only half the battle, and actually it's the least important one in my opinion, the most important part about the whole darn using a camera experience is a little thing I call fiddliness. So you know, it, the most important part of cameras for me is how easy is it to get the image quality you want after you hit record. So we've already talked about the body, we've already seen the vlogging test, we know what the cameras are capable of, but how easy is it to get that image quality? And there's just, there's really no comparison. Like there are very few cameras on the market today that can beat the Canon M50 for ease of use after you hit record. So the Rebel T6, I mean, it does okay for what it is, but as a two year old camera with no continuous autofocus, no flip screen and no audio import, like, come on, man, the, the M50 is one of the easiest to use cameras on the market today. That's why this is my camera and this is the everyday wife's camera. If she starts doing more, I'll get her a better camera. At the end of the day though, both cameras are usable so as we saw in monday's video it is not as bad as i thought it would be to get really good image quality out of the rebel t6 like so long as you have a wide enough lens that you can just like touch it and make sure that you can confirm focus like it's not that bad even without continuous autofocus and even right now like on the monday video we are holding solidarity with the t6 and we're recording all of this audio with an external recorder the zoom h1n even if you have a camera without an audio in jack you can still get good audio even the Z6 right now, we're recording externally. Like, that's not that big of a deal. The M50 does not need that solidarity if it didn't want it. It has an audio in jack, it's got okay preamps. I mean, Canon does not have the best preamps in the business, but the audio is not terrible. It's pretty good. You got the flip screen, you got dual pixel autofocus that just, I could go on for days about how easy the M50 is to use. So in a fiddliness battle, the M50, I mean, look, the M50 beats the Z6 that we're on right now. The M50 beats just about every other camera on the market out there. What, what camera would I say is less fiddly than the M50? I'll have to think about that. What camera do you think is less fiddly than the M50? Leave a comment below. I'm curious to find out what other camera, like what? I honestly, right now, I don't think I can think of one. It's probably the easiest camera on the market to use which, I mean, it dominates. It crushes its older, bigger brother. <laughs> okay, back to the video. <sighs> Dang, it's cold out there. Something else I'm finding out is having non-weatherproofed cameras out in the snow makes me super nervous. But such is the price of YouTube camera comparisons. <laughs> I really enjoy what I do. So we've got the video quality and we've seen how easy it is to get that video quality. So if you decide to get one of these cameras, will you have the ability to grow with it or is it kind of a dead end street? This is gonna be a tough one because frankly, I think DSLRs in general are a dead end street and camera companies are all kind of pivoting towards a mirrorless future. I mean, again, Nikon Z6, Canon EOS R. Mirrorless cameras are cheaper to make, and for video they offer some much improved features. I mean, again, look at my love affair with my Nikon Z6 as an example. I love you, Z6. But I'm also not sure that the Canon M mount is a surefire future-proof system either. Again, I continue to recommend this as this is one of the best budget cameras, but Canon in recent months came out with a full frame RF mount that is bigger with a shorter flange distance and feels like that's where all of the lens R&D is gonna be for Canon in the future. 
I keep all of that gloom and doom up front to say that both cameras have very good ecosystems as of today, but in the future, if you're trying to grow in the future, there might be better options out there. The T6 can natively use just about every lens in the EF and EFS full frame and crop lineup, giving it a huge punching power for such a cheap body. Whereas the M50 has a pretty small line of native lenses, there is an adapter, <laughs> this adapter in fact, that lets you mount the same lenses to it as the T6, but that is an extra piece and will be an extra cost when we're trying to stay in as much as budget as possible. So again, I'm gonna give the ecosystem to the T6. The M50 is absolutely easier to use, but I feel like it has less options for battery grips and native lenses. But it does at least come with a hot shoe mount cover. If you know me, you know that hot shoe mount covers are a hot button issue. For me. After all that jazz, so what, right? So should you save your pennies and get the T6? Or a few hundred more dollars should you save up for the M50? This actually ended up being a tougher call to make than I originally thought. Like I said in the beginning, the M50 was my favorite budget camera released in 2018 and still is one of my favorite budget cameras of all time. But if you are going for super budget friendly because some people just will not be able to afford the M50, I think it's easy enough to get a decent image out of the T6 that I don't think it would be a terrible purchase for somebody looking to start out. Now, a lot of people are gonna start with cell phones which are perfectly fine, but if you want something a little better in low light, something with an APS-C sensor is gonna do really well. Again, you'll have to work around the fact that there is no continuous autofocus in video mode, there is no audio in jack, and there's no flip screen. But the saving grace is the image quality is actually pretty darn good. And if you are in total saver mode, like you're trying to pinch as many pennies as you can, you can totally pick up a used one of these on B&H or even Canon's refurbished website for less than 350 bucks, including the lens. That gives you a whole lot of power for a pretty small price. For me personally, I would rather have something with at least usable autofocus and or a flip screen. But again, if you were trying to save every penny and stretch your budget as far as possible, because you're still gonna need some kind of audio, you're still gonna need lighting and stuff like that if you wanna make these videos. I think you can make something like the T6 work, especially if you have somebody helping you out. Thanks for watching.